Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Easy Life and if you don't know me, I'm an ex semi professional player who represented the Evolution team of Fordalini Sports. I also helped Angry Titans as an analyst on their last split third place run on the playoffs. Throughout my career, I've helped many people. I've also played with and against many professional players and had contact with many professional players and I've gathered a lot of good information. Now I want to give this information for you guys. So in today's video, I'm actually going to give you guys five tips that you can use to improve in Valorant. Some of these tips will be more for newer players and lower, and lower ELO players, but some parts of it, I think they are important for any rank and any stage of your career. So number one tip, time. Okay. I think time is very important if you want to improve. You cannot just play one day uh, every week and expect yourself to improve. So I'd say like two hours a day, uh, most of the days in a week, though I think that's a pretty good number to start with. And if you think that's too little, I'd say that it isn't. And my argument is that someone that goes to the gym every day for two hours, you wouldn't consider that person a casual, right? And even casual players can improve. So I think two hours are just enough for you to start your journey to improving. Now, if we're going to talk about what you're going to do with your time, these are the most important things that you should do with your time. You should do a warm-up and have a warm-up routine. You should play the game, like play ranked, and then you should have an aim training routine after you play the games, and then you should review yourself. That can be before or it can be after. Uh, usually, after you play the game, you're probably going to be mentally tired. So it's it can be easier if you start your day with reviewing as well. It will let you know on the things that you need to focus on while you're playing ranked. Now, inside of that, how are you going to manage your time? I'd say your warm-up routine, let's pretend we have two hours. Your warm-up routine should be something like five minutes just to get your hands warm. And then you play two games. Probably the average uh, time of the games are like half an hour. And then you would probably have... Uh, a 30 minute uh, aim training routine at the very least 30 minutes if you have two hours max would be 30 minutes you could also do something like 20 minutes and then you would review yourself now to review yourself you don't need to watch the full game so even 15 minutes of reviewing can be helpful so if you want to increase time in either like uh, your aim training routine which i would advise better than doing one more ranked game uh, that it's fine because you can always like look for certain and specific things in your gameplay that you want to improve and then just look at the video in like 2x the speed time uh, you can just watch one half just the city side for today and then work the attacking side uh, for tomorrow that's fine as well. So 15 minutes a day can still be very, very helpful and insightful. And this is how you would manage your time. Okay, and we're going to the tip number two, which is setup. I almost forgot, but it is setup. Now, let's be honest. If you're playing with a toaster or if you're playing on your Game Boy Color, you won't be able to grind. Or, I mean, you will be able to grind. You will not be able to improve. We can only be as good as our setup lets us be. So... You should aim for a setup that, it, that has like 60 FPS or 60 FPSs or more, and that those FPSs are consistent, that you're not getting uh, a lot of FPS drops, and your spikes, like your FPS spikes, can be very high so you don't get stutters. Okay? Look for a consistent setup because that is very important if you want to improve. And it actually should be your main priority if you're looking to improve. Not any information you can get about the game, but actually getting a proper setup. Okay, guys, now tip number three is gonna be kind of a, of a complex one. And, and I think it's honestly the most important one. And it is mentality. Now, uh, this one is pretty tricky because I feel like it is the number one thing that sets you back or m makes you stagnate. Let's talk about first, like being humble. You first need to understand that you are the problem in order to improve. You need to understand that you might not be as good as you think and that you need improvement. And probably since you clicked on this video means that you're trying to improve and you already understand that. So that's the first step, being humble and understanding that there's stuff about you that need improvement. Second thing, we all get emotion over things that are not in our control. Okay, 
We get very emotional about that. Human beings mostly get emotional about things that they cannot control. And you got to understand what are the things that you can control and the things that you cannot control inside of the game if you want to improve. So you can let your mind be more calm about the things that you cannot control and you can focus more and worry about more the things you can control. Now, in-game, usually this is like growth versus results-oriented mindset. And a person that is focused on growth is focused on the actions that this set person needs to do in order to improve. That is, for example, like I explained on the tip before, uh, I need to do the warm-up, I need to do it this way, and I need to play two ranked games, and I need to do a name training routine, and I need to review myself. Someone that is only focused on the actions that they need to do in order to improve, after they do it independently of the result, like, doesn't matter if the two games were two losses. If he's focused on growth, he's focused that he did his job. He did what he had to do. He did his tasks for the day, and that will fulfill that person. And a more positive mindset, it means that he is in a better mood. That person is in a better mood when playing, which means she is more focused and prone to improvement. A person that is focused on results, and results are usually things that you cannot control, because this, let's be honest, it's a team game, okay? You cannot control what type of teammates you get. Yes, the reason why you are the rank that you are is not their fault completely, okay? But yes, you can uh, end up queuing up and matching with some bad players on your team. So there are games that you have no say in and you will definitely lose no matter what you do. But that's something that you cannot control. You cannot control, actually, until a certain rank, you actually can control the people that you get matched to if you do a five-man pre-made. And that's what I recommend you guys to do. But if you solo queue, do dual queue, you cannot control the other people that get into your lobby. So there's no point in getting mad over your teammates and getting upset and getting real tilted because when you're in a bad space and a bad mood, you're not really focused on the things that you should focus on in order to improve. You're not focused on your mistakes, your bad habits, uh, what you should be doing in the game and stuff like that. So a person that is focused on results, that person goes into the warm-up and I need to hit the high score of oh my God, I didn't hit my high score. And then he goes to a game, I want to win, I want to win, I want to win. And then he loses and he's pissed. Oh my God, I should have won that game. And then he goes into his end training again. I need to hit my high scores. I need to hit my high scores. And he doesn't hit his high scores and he gets pissed off. And then he goes to review uh, his game and probably is in a, such a bad uh, mood that everything he sees is how his teammates are doing things badly. And now that will not only be so stressful that some people just want to quit the game, but it is so stressful and or uh, so far away from the actual thing that will make that person improve that they will never improve or they will improve in a very slow state, um, pace, sorry. And as well, they might even stagnate and just stay in the same level forever. Only be emotional about things that you can control um, obviously, uh, if you're not doing what you have to do, then you should, you should be mad about that and try to fix it. Another topic is ladder anxiety. A lot of people, let's imagine a silver player gets into gold and he, he when he's in silver, he, he puts gold players on a higher pedestal. So now that he got into gold, now he sees these gold players as being on another level. At the same time, like he worked so hard to get gold that now he doesn't want to lose it. So he gets ladder anxiety. Now, it can also be because there, that player is afraid, just, just gets letter anxiety, just because he's really afraid of playing ranked and ending up being bad. Um, all those things, though, I think I have a good tip about how you should approach it and how you should see it. You should see things. It's like you should not see things as dumb uh, versus smart or good versus bad. What you should honestly see things, you should see things as experienced versus inexperienced, okay? And and this is very important because obviously if, you, if you're if you going to learn a new skill set today, let's imagine you don't know how to dance and you want to learn 
how to dance. So you're going to learn a new step. Probably going to be bad and fail. And that happens to most of us. Okay. So don't see things as bad and good. Yeah, you'll probably suck, but that's because you don't have experience. It's not because you are bad. It's not because you are dumb. See it as you are inexperienced. And the only way to get experience is to actually try. And as you try, you'll get better. So if you start seeing things like that, things won't be, um, won't make you as anxious. Like if you're, if you're gold and, or if you were a silver player and you just got into gold and you're afraid of losing your rank because you feel like you're playing against another, uh, like players on another level, it's okay. You might lose it uh, and you might not be as good but it's just because you're lacking experience. As soon as you have that experience, you will stay at gold and maybe you'll get even further. So let me go in there and get that experience because that's what you need. And that way you won't feel that anxious about it. And even if you do feel, which is normal, there are professional players who feel that anxiety, even champions. Uh, there's the example of Double Lift. He is a multiple time NA champion and he still feels better anxiety usually when he hits a very high peak or when he's some like when he when he stopped playing for like ranked for some time and then he comes back and hits a good pick and then he starts feel letter anxiety because he's on a new level he's afraid of of losing of losing the hilo and etc it's all common the only way though that you can actually make it all go away is if you actually try and get that experience okay and over time the feeling goes away because you got more experience and you're already used to playing against those, ty those type of players. Uh, you have already reached that hilo plenty of times. So it's when the feeling of what you got starts to become a norm, then there's no more anxiety because it's normal. Okay. Okay. Tip number four. Now, this one is a tip more for low elo players. Now, trust me, let's say iron to gold. Okay. From those ranks, trust me when I say it, you guys are not playing for the objective. Now, the attacking team, I'm going to tell you guys what are the objectives and you should always play for that. You should, like, that should be your main priority and you're not doing it. So pay attention to these guys. The main objective of the attacking team, and I'm sorry I, I had my microphone too close. The main objective for the attacking team is to plant the spike. Now, in order to, for you guys to plant a spike, you need to get control over a bomb site. So you should play together. You should, if you're not taking the bomb, you should follow the bomb, the guy that has the bomb, and help him plant the spike. If you guys uh, are the guys with the spike, you should be asking your teammates to come with you, or you should go to the place where most of your teammates are, because that's where you get more chances of actually taking control over a bomb site. So that's a, a very important fact. Now, after you actually get the spike planted, the objective now switches to making sure that the spike explodes. It's not killing the enemy team, the objective. Obviously, you will win if every single one of them is dead. But the main objective is to get the spike to explode. So you play for spike you don't play to kill. It's completely different, okay? And this is something that people not even in Immortal get. So if you start playing for that and you start like really focusing on that and creating a good habit, you will improve so fast and you will have been creating this habit for so long that when you get to higher ranks, you will be a way better player than, than they are. Now, for the defense team, What's the objective? To stop the enemy team from planting the spike. Now, obviously, this yes means that if you kill them all, uh, you will win the round because you stop them from planting the spike. But usually, the main objective is to not let them into the bomb sites. That's why, uh, or spike sites. I don't know what it's called in Valorant, actually, but probably spike sites. <laughs> now, if you don't let them into spike sites, um, they won't plant the spike. And this is where like, people in low elo get it confused and don't know exactly what to do. But usually all your focus should be on how am I going to defend a spike side. And you should do it with your teammates. And, and that's pretty much it. Now, if the enemy team does plant the spike, your main objective now switches to defusing the spike. And that is also made with the team 
and, and and it's very important that your main priority and your main focus on your mind is to diffuse that spike so your rotation should be as fast as possible into that place and it shouldn't be focused on perma flanking or stuff like that no it should like your main focus for the game should be to go there as a team together with numbers and diffuse that spike get the control of the of the spike side back now for all oh shit oh i thought i wasn't recording now for all this to happen there needs to be team play you need to be close to your teammates and one very important thing and one important concept and fundamental of any F tactical fps shooter is trading if your teammate dies then you trade you kill the guy that killed him not back because you kill him back no he kill him back i don't know if it's killing back anyway you kill the guy that killed your teammate and that's very important so you need to be next to your team and 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 making crossfires which mean the lines of sights of both of you guys like collide uh, and you guys are positioned in a way that your enemies can only shoot at one at a time but both of you can shoot at him at the same time so crossfires trade very important concept that you guys in low elo really really need to focus on another very important concept that you need to understand is economy okay now it's pretty i, I need to make a video on this but you should search it up on youtube and search other content creators for how uh, you should use your economy and you should learn a uh, pistol round what to do on the after winning a pistol round after losing a pistol round you should learn bonus rounds what they what those are and how you should buy on ecos how you should buy on semi buys stuff like that it's very important for you to rank up and increase your chances of getting that round win and round wins turn into game wins let's go mechanics i've already made a lot of videos about mechanics in this channel good ones so you can check them out i'll tell you what's the important most important mechanics that you need to learn aim is number one i have a crosshair placement video probably i'll leave it here on the left side there's a crosshair placement video there's a how to counter straight video and movement is the second most important thing on the game and then there's a general uh video that as like what's the best crosshair what's the best sensitivity uh, gun mechanics stuff like that it's a little bit more longer that video is more general i just talk and explain everything in a row no editing but everything is here on the channel for you to learn and those are the most important mechanics that you should focus on as a low helo player okay guys i hope this was really helpful i hope you enjoyed the video but i know that uh, everyone's problems are not the same right not everyone has the same issues that everyone has so for that case in specific i do one-on-one -on -one life coaching and if you're interested in getting coached by me make sure to check the metafy link that i'm gonna leave down below it's my metafy coaching page and if you would like a session with me make sure to check it out um if you're not interested in paying you can always join our discord community i give free tips you can ask anything at any time and i'll answer asap there you also get access to a resources page and or a resources channel actually that has a lot of things on aim training and personal improvement so if you enjoyed that check the, the link down below as well for our discord server our discord server that is it and see you in the next